Hey guys, it's Peter from The Mentors and welcome to the fifth episode of our Building Feeder Microservices.NET 6.0 related series. And in this episode, we are actually going to work with our real very first data stream using the Redis pops up. All right, so what we are going to build in this episode is the following. We already do have our pricing generator component, which is actually responsible for kind of mimic, mimicking our currency per data stream or, or data generation process, right? So we can generate this data easily within this component. And now we would like to somehow stream this data further to other services. So in our case, we would, for example, like to stream this pricing this uh, currency pair, uh, data, the symbols, timestamps, and so on to our aggregator microservice so that this microservice could, for example, use this data stream for its internal purposes later on. And what we are going to use, as, as you can imagine, there is like a lot of different tools, a lot of different infrastructural tools that you could use when it comes to sending messages, streaming data, and so on. So in this episode, we are going to use something simple yet powerful which is going to be Redis. And most likely you have heard or maybe even used the Redis already because it's a very major solution. It's been there for many years now and Redis is primarily used as some kind of caching mechanism, right? But this is much more than being like a typical, simple key value per caching mechanism. Within Redis, you have access to a lot of internal collections, data types, structures, uh, and other cool stuff like even you know geo positioning and this this kind of things. So what we are going to do is that we are going to use this Redis pops up mechanism, which allows us to connect pretty much the producer and multiple multiple consumers as much as many consumers as we need, and stream the data between them. So you might think of our feeds, our quotes feed service microservice as for example consume or as producer within this uh, within this solution, and then we might plug in, for example, our aggregator microservice or another microservice to be the consumer of our new currency pair and data feed uh, stream. So this is what we are going to do within this episode. And you will see how easy it is to plug in the Redis pops up into your solution. And we are also going to uh, actually tackle our feeder.shared project where we'll put some very first shared cross-cutting concerns that, that could be reused by different microservices. All right, then let's start with adding the Redis into our solution. So you can, of course, navigate to the Redis IO and check all of the great tools, documentation, and all the great Redis features that are available out there. But now we want to add this uh, Redis into our infrastructure. So at first, let's jump into our Docker Compose YAML here. And here, as you can imagine, as you can already, um, as you've already seen, we have our services described within the Docker. So we are now going to add this Redis instance into our infrastructure YAML. So I'm just going to put here this services. And then within a services definition, let's start with adding our Redis. So we are going to use the official Redis image from the Docker Hub. And then let's specify the default name for our container, which will be Redis. And the other stuff like restart unless, so restart under unless stopped. So we want, we want to restart it unless we uh, stop it manually. Then we want to plug it in, into our network called feeder. So if we were to run this infrastructure along with our microservices, they can talk to the same network. And actually now we can uncomment this external true from our services YAML because now the, the network will be initially created by, by our infrastructure YAML here. So the network's in place. Now we want to expose the port. So I'm going to expose the default port, which is 6397, right? This one. And finally, if we want to store the Redis data, we can uh, provide here some kind of a vol volume section. So for example, I would like to store the Redis data uh, using this local volume. So now I need to map this specific volume to our volumes uh, section here. So for this volume's name called Redis, I want to use this local driver. So all this data will be kept locally on our drive. So even if we remove the container, 
that data will be there living within our uh, local drive for this Redis instance. So this is our Redis definition. So before we add some code, let's see if we can actually run this Redis instance. So now let's jump back into our terminal and let's try to type something like docker compose minus F infrastructure up and then minus D. Okay, so it seems to be up and running. Let me just quickly uh, fix this one. It should be of course with a dash, not the underscore. So once again, all right, we can type docker ps, Redis is up and running. And if you like to get within the Redis itself, within the server, you can type something like docker exec, and this will execute using, this will execute this command in the interactive mode. So within our Redis container, we want to execute the already installed built in Redis CLI. So if I type it this way, you can see that, that now I'm connected into this uh, Redis local instance within our Redis container. So I can do something like keys. And for now, our Redis database is empty. So this is the place where I could, you know, type some Redis commands and then uh, just, you know, get some auto completion here and look for the data, add some data, delete some values and so on and so on. So that looks quite good. Now let's uh, jump to our code. So this is actually the episode in which we'll start adding some stuff into our shared layer. So uh, let's start with installing the Redis package. So I will type Redis and we are going to use the this great stack exchange the Redis package. So this one to talk to the Redis. And also within our shared uh, project, what I'm going uh, what I'm going to do uh, is to add the following. So let me type just let me just pick a four and here let me just provide this new item group like this item group and then I want to have the actual framework reference so I want to be able to see all the stuff from the ASP.NET Core framework since we are going to use a shared package for different stuff like middlewares, background services and so on and so on so I'm just going to include the whole framework now so I don't have to you know install the distinct NuGet packages for all that stuff like containing IOC definition, I configuration definition and other other things. So this is our shared uh, project for now. And now let's start with uh, adding our Redis. So I'm going to make a directory here. And this is once again, this is how you could actually start structuring your shared right with Windows at first, starting with these directories, and then maybe extracting these directories into separate projects and then publishing them as NuGet packages so that you would remove this dependencies between your services, having a need to actually reference the actual project on the drive. After some time, you could just publish this stuff to your NuGet, custom, public, private NuGet, and then uh, just reference this as a package, not as the code, which would be some kind of a tight coupling as, as it is for now. So I'm going to start with this extension. So I'm going to follow this, let's say, um, ASP.NET Core convention. And then I'm going to call this, I'm going to add this method returning iService collection our IOC, uh, let's say, definition. And then I will call this add Redis, and this will accept the iService collection services. And this will also accept the iConfiguration instance, since you like to put some Redis configuration data into, let's say, application settings. So before we move on with this stuff, let's create a new uh, class. I will call this Redis options. And within our Redis options type, I'm just going to keep one property so I'm just going to put here the public string and then I will call this connection string. And of course, if you want to, if you like to put more properties there, just feel free, feel free to extend this custom Redis options type. And now within our add Redis uh, method, what I'm going to do is at first, I will ask my configuration for the section. So we can use this get required section. So if the section is not present in our app settings, this will for an exception. So the section will be called Redis. And then I will make this new options object. So new Redis options. I will bind this uh, section to my options. So I can, for example, now grab my options connection string and then pass it further, for example, to some uh, component responsible for making the first connection to our Redis object, to our Redis server. And then let me just configure it. So I can call services configure. So now I'm also able to uh, let's say, inject these Redis options using iOptions built-in interface if I need them in some other components. Sorry for this section. 
And finally, uh, what I want to do is I'm going to call this at singleton, and we are going to register this iConnection multiplexer as a single instance. As you can see, this is coming from our stack exchange Redis package. So I'm going to register it, and I'm just going to provide that the way to resolve this is simply by calling this connection multiplexer, this instance, this component, and then connect. And as you can see, we have this options connection string. So what is going to happen now is this, is that when we are, when we will call this method at Redis, and this connect, this connect will try to invoke its internal Redis connection. If the Redis server is down, our application will fail. It will not, it will not start. So it's up to you whether you treat Redis as kind of required infrastructure or whether you want your app to start first and then try to connect and maybe reconnect at some point for some fallback policies, retrace policy, maybe using Paul library. So it's really up to you. In our case, if the Redis is down, we will not allow our app to just start. So let's see. Uh, let's try to invoke this from our, um, from our feed. So the idea is that we'll try to send some data from the quotes, our feed quotes to our aggregator service using this Redis pops up mechanism. So at first here, let me just call something like builder services and then add Redis. All right, so this is our internal method. And then I can provide builder configuration instance. All right, so this is what we are going to call. And of course, if I try to run this app now, it should fail because it won't find this section. And then if, it, if the section was here, um, if there is connection uh, same being empty, it will not be able to connect. So you can see the Redis section wasn't found. So let's try to add this section here now. So the Redis, and then with our connection string. And for now, I'll make this em an empty string. So let's try to run this now. And now this will fail because it will not be able to connect to our Redis. As you can see, this is empty and it cannot parse it. So there's an issue. So now if I type localhost to connect to the default Redis instance, which is up and running under this exposed public port, this should be able to connect to Redis and we should be good to go. So let's see. All right, it's connected to Redis, so that's great. And I can already add the same section for our aggregator project, so here, and I can also call within our aggregator service the same services and then simply builder services at Redis, just like this. So I can call it also here because we are going to use the same Redis instance also here within this uh, aggregator project as well. So that that looks uh, actually uh, good for now. So what is the next uh, next thing? So next thing is that we want to be able to somehow stream this data, all right? So well, let's jump into our uh, already existing background service. So we have this background service which actually starts or stops the generator, all right? And when we actually start the generator, what we want to do is, for example, somewhere here, maybe we would like to send this data to the Redis or any other stream because we'll just use Redis pops up as a sample, but we would like to send this data further, right? Somehow stream this data. And it's important to mention that in our case, we don't care if the data gets lost. We are streaming the current data. So this is not like a message broker where you would send a message, kind of a business message to the queue, and then if the service is down and if the service starts, you would receive this message from the queue, for example, because the message will be persisted. We don't care about this. We want to get data as it is uh, at this particular time sum, and if the data is lost, we don't care because maybe we don't care what was the pricing value, what was this currency per um, value from 10 minutes ago. It's not like a business event order completed. It's just some data which is particular, which is, which is, let's say, valid and makes sense at this specific moment, but not, let's say, 10 minutes later. So we don't care if the data gets lost. So this is how this pops up actually operates by default. This is what the pops up is for. To just, for example, stream data in our case without, uh, without any need of persistence. And if we need a persistence, we could either use some proper message broker, as we will do in one of the future episodes, or we could just you know, try to save the data into our database before or after streaming it later to the other services. So this will be, let's say, our task. So somewhere here, we want to stream the data. And now the question is, so how do we actually do it? Because you can see, we just call the start async, we return the task, and the data is actually present here. So we want a way to somehow stream the data. 
And for me, well, it doesn't look like the responsibility of this component to be to actually stream the data. So this component generates this currency purse, but I don't want this component to be aware of something like pops up streaming message brokers. So in our case, we would like to somehow get this data, for example, here, right? So I would like to get this data somehow here and then push it within our background service, which is already responsible for starting or stopping our generator. So it could be also responsible for streaming the data further. So what we are going to do is that we are going to simply change this from being just a task to be the I async enumerable, all right? So we are going to use this new great new great component from the system API, and this will be responsible for streaming our currency pair, all right? So we have this uh, simple structure already there. So this will be what we are going to stream between our services. So now let's change the implementation of our generator. So I'm just going to uh, change this from the actual task to be of the I async enumerable of our pricing currency per uh, data model. So if it's not running, I'm just going to call yield break, right? So I want to stop this loop. And if it's running, what I'm going to do, I'm constructing my currency pair here, and I'm just going to call our yield return and then pricing data, currency pair pricing data. So something like this. So now we are good to go. Uh, we have this async enumerable, which is running for as long uh, as, uh, until it gets stopped by calling this method, and we will be, it will be continuously streaming or publishing our currency pairs with different values being updated every one second. And then we can actually, just like we did here, we can call this a wait for each and try to push this data further through some pops up or streaming mechanism in general. So here I can do something like a wait for each and then for each pricing or currency pair, whatever you call it, in our pricing generator uh, start async, I'm just going to, uh, you know, push our data further. So here, let me just log something like publishing the currency pair, blah, 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 right? So I'm just pushing the data further. And this is the place in which we are going to, you know, stream this data. So let's move on into our streaming component. So once again, let's jump into our shared, uh, shared project. And I'm going to add here a new directory and I'll call this one streaming. And let's start with two simple interfaces there. So let me just do something like a new interface and I'll call the first one I stream publisher, right? So the, the component responsible for publishing our data and this will expose a single method called publish async, which can accept any kind of a T. So the T will have to be a reference type. So where T is a class and this will stream data to any kind of a topic. So we have this logical, let's say arbitrary name of this so-called topic, which depends on the message broker or streaming or pop sub mechanism you're using. Um, you know, it might, it might be a different thing, but actually you use it, for example, as a key, some kind of a channel to which you send data. And then the other side, the consumer side can actually subscribe to this specific channel, for example, by using this string key as a topic name and receive the data from this channel. So this is what we are going to call this just as a topic, uh, which is very common name for the pops up or message broker mechanism in general. I want to push this data to this topic so that the consumer side can subscribe to this topic and get this data from this topic, whatever the key of this, whatever the value of this topic is. And then we'll have the similar interface and now we'll call this one, the stream subscriber. So I stream subscriber, and this will expose a method called subscribe async, just like this. And similar to our uh, publisher, um, it will return a task and it will have this action of T. So it will be the so-called handler. So I can provide here any method which will receive a single T object, this data object, and then it can do anything, save to database, log something, produce an event, whatever, whatever it needs. So two simple components, the stream subscriber and the stream publisher, all right? So now before we move on, before we move on to our Redis, it's usually a good practice to provide at least 
like a dumb implementation of your components so you can use them. So you could, for example, plug this additional streaming package. This would be, let's say, another package within our shared project published as this NuGet package. So we could just plug this into our services and at least our services wouldn't break. So we would plug this, we would add this streaming package and you know, there would be no streaming because this would use some dumb implementation behind the scenes, but at least the application wouldn't break. So at least let's try to implement some dummy, uh, dummy class uh, for these two interfaces. So the first one will be our default stream publisher and it will implement our uh, iStream publisher like this. Let me just implement the missing members here and let me move it to the separate, uh, separate file. And what it's going to do, pretty much nothing. It will just return our task, completed task, just like this. And the same for our subscriber. So for our iStream subscriber, I want to declare here the default stream subscriber like this, and this will simply return a task. So what we can do now, all right, once again, let's ima just imagine that we are building our custom set of packages for microservices or other apps in the future. Uh, let's follow the same convention as we already did in Redis, as we did here. So we are going to add this uh, single method within our static extension stat type. So let's call this uh, add streaming. And by following the same convention, we can do something like services. And then I want to register our singleton for the iStream publisher being the default stream publisher like this. And for our iStream sub subscriber, let's say iStream subscriber being the default implementation of this stream subscriber. So what we can do now is that we can now jump into our code, into our program CS of both and the quotes feed. So here, and we can call something like add streaming, all right? And then into our aggregator, we can also call this add streaming. So now we are not, we are still not able to use the Redis PubSub with our streaming, but at least we can write the code, how it should look like. So within our quotes feed, being our publisher of this data for this currency purse, what we can do is that we can jump into our background service and then here we can simply inject this i streaming publisher. So we are the producer of this, uh, this data, the stream publisher. And then we can simply call within our loop something like stream publisher and then publish async. So let's say we are going to publish the topic called pricing and then our data, which is going to be the currency pair. All right. So that's our publisher side. So this will do nothing for now. It will just, as you can see, simply call this completed task, this is what will going to happen. So nothing really special, but at least we can, from that point on, rather easily switch to the using Redis and start streaming the real data through Redis PubSub mechanism. And the other thing I want to do is the uh, is provide this, let's say, template on our uh, consumer side. So somewhere here, let me just make a directory and now we'll call this one the services. And I'm just going to um, add a new class here and I'll call this something like pricing stream background service, right? So this should, this should tell you hopefully what, is, what will be the responsibility of this component. So this will simply implement or actually derive from our background service. And internally here, what we are going to do is the following. So we are going to inject here our iStream subscriber, the stream subscriber, and I can also subscribe, or and I can also inject here the let's say the logger, so we can log some uh, data here. Let's say the logger like this, and let's now within our execute async call something like subscriber and then subscribe async. So when our application starts within this execute async, I'm just going to subscribe. I'm going to subscribe to this pricing topic, so the same topic name as as um, this one. And now of course I need to provide my data model. So what I'm going to do for now, I'm going to just copy and paste this record, all right? So I don't want to have this coupling within the services, so I'm keeping this internal. So what I'm doing actually now is there is my data model or my message or even model, uh, which is, let's say, the integration message within the single service boundary. And then I have the copy, the structure of this, uh, let's say, same integration data model, even whatever you call this, within the other service. So I'm following this local contracts principle 
which uh, allows me to reduce any coupling between the services. I want my services to be isolated from each other. I don't want to keep this uh, data models within some shared libraries. So I'm just looking, let's say, at the documentation of my microservice, just as I would do if I were to look at the documentation of my open API schema using, for example, Swagger. And then I'm just going to provide my local, uh, let's say, local contract of this data model that I'm interested in. So I will subscribe to this currency pair here within this method. And the handler for now, there's, there's our currency pair as a data. So there's our data. So I'm just going to, for now, simply log a message. So let's say simply logger, log information. And then let's just log that we have received the pricing. And then we just we can just log our stuff here. So currency pair symbol. And then let's say equals our currency pair dot value. And with this fixed point formatting. And also we can, let's say, uh, log our timestamp. And let's and let me just log the latest value, which is going to be our currency pair dot timestamp. So something like this. Nothing special, but as you can imagine, here you can do pretty much anything. Uh, you can you know save into the database this stuff. You can publish some additional events. You can process this pricing, whatever you want. This is uh, this is going to be the place where you could think of additional processing of this data that you are receiving in real time as the stream coming from your, uh, let's say, quote service. So now we should have a way to connect these two services to one to another. And of course, if we run these apps now, nothing will really happen. So if I register this background service as a singleton here, which of course I need to do. So within our aggregator, let me just register this as a singleton. So if I run our codes now, and if I run our, and if I run our aggregator now, of course there'll be no streaming. But let's just see if these, app these applications are, we can run them without any issues. So now I have two services being available, the first one and second one. And of course, if I start my uh, quotes, my pricing generator now by calling this um, rest endpoint pricing start, this will of course start this um, um, generator. As you can see, it's happening there in the background. It's calling this, it's logging this, publishing the currency pair, but of course nothing is happening, right? So I'm not receiving any data because I'm still using this dumb implementation. But at least we have now a template to our, uh, we have our temp we have the template of our services, which are now able to, you know, talk to each other in some way using this pubsub mechanism, but we just need to add this Redis pubsub in place. So it should be as easy as just switching this default implementation of the default stream publisher and subscriber components into the proper components using the Redis. So yeah, let's add the final piece uh, of our Redis pops up uh, to the shared library. So I'll, I'm going to add the new directory called the streaming under our Redis. So once again, I would have now three packages. So the one package for streaming, another package for Redis, and a third package, something like redis.streaming, because maybe I just want to use Redis, but I don't care about streaming, or maybe I just want to use streaming but I don't care about Redis. Maybe later on I will introduce Kafka or some other you know, mechanism to, for this event streaming uh, scenario. So I will just keep this as a three separate uh, Nougat packages in the future. So let's start with, let's say, Redis Stream Publisher. And what we are going to do is actually going to be quite simple. So I'll make this one an internal sealed class. And this will, of course, implement our iStream Publisher. And we want to publish the data some way. So what we can do is through the constructor, we can inject our I connection multiplexer, right? So this guy, so we can inject it here like this connection multiplexer. And then from this multiplexer, what I can do, I can actually ask for the connection multiplexer get subscriber. So this will give us back the subscriber, which is now able to send or receive the messages. Okay, so here within our publish async, we can do something as return and then subscriber and then publish async. So this is just a task, so we can just call this publish async and we can provide it to the topic. And now we need to provide some kind, somehow the data. So how do I provide the data? Because as you can expect, as you can see, this expects from us some kind of Redis value, which can also be, for example, a string. So I need a way somehow to serialize the data. So serialize the data using some kind of serialization mechanism. 
whether this is going to be something more efficient like protobuf or anything else, let's say binary serialization, or something less efficient but still uh, quite efficient like, let's say, the JSON data. So let's now try to add a simple serialization into our code. And once again, let's say another fourth uh, NuGet package in that case. So I'm going to uh, create this directory under shared called deserialization and one last extension method in this episode. So we are just going to expose a very simple uh, API or very simple extension method called something like uh, add serialization. So we want to operate on abstractions, you know, pretty much whenever possible. So I don't want to have any tight coupling for our for the different serialization mechanisms. I want to be able to, let's say, switch them easily. So let's assume that we'll do something like uh, an interface called the I serializer, and then we'll implement it within a, a class called, for example, system text JSON serializer, which, as you can imagine, will make use of the built-in system uh, JSON serialization uh, component. So we can do something like this. So let's uh, start with this interface. So I'm going now to add here this public interface called the uh, I serializer, this guy, and this will expose two methods. So the first one will be the serialize for any kind of a T, so the T value. And the second one will be just T and then the serialize, and then returning the T string value like this. And we can, of course, make this constraint here. So where T has to be a reference type, and also here, the T has to be a reference type. For example, we can do it also this way. And now let me just implement it here. So I'm going to provide the default implementation for this, this guy. So internal sealed, and I'll call this one system text JSON because as I already said, we might think of let's say protobuf serialization, UTF-8 JSON serialization, other kind of serialization mechanism, whether this is binary text or any other any other let's say data, data type serialization mechanism. So I'm just going to use this uh, system text uh, JSON serializer within this uh, component. So here uh, I will simply implement these two methods. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to call our JSON serializer from this system text JSON namespace and then call serialize value. And here I'm going to call our JSON serializer and then deserialize to this type of T our value. And I want to provide here some custom options. So let me just create here this uh, read only uh, JSON serializer options because maybe I want to change some the default behavior of the serializer. So I'm just going to make a new default options for this guy. So let me just do something like, I don't care about the, um, let's say my property naming policy will be the camel case in this case. So the camel case, I don't care about a property being case sensitive. So this will be case insensitive too. And let's say the converter, whenever let's say we will see the enum uh, type, I want to convert this enum type to the string, let's say not the integer, not the numeric value, and I want to convert it using the camel case convention. So something like this, and we can provide these options here, and we can extend this with custom converters if needed for some custom types and so on. So now the last thing is uh, just calling this serialization extension within our program CS. So here I'm just going to call this at JSON at serialization like this, and I'm also going to call this at serialization somewhere here, like this. And now we can uh, jump back into our Redis streaming, and we can also here simply inject our new serializer, okay? And we can simply just serialize this data. So we can do something like payload, and this will be our serializer, serialize our data, and we can provide this payload here as a string because it has this conversion between this Redis value, uh, between the Redis value to string and string to Redis value as well. And now let's jump into our uh, new component, which is going to be, as you can imagine, the Redis stream subscriber. So we have the publisher already implemented, this guy, and now we want to implement the subscriber. So let me just do Redis stream subscriber, and this will 
once again, similar to our publisher, uh, implement this interface. And similar to our publisher, we are just going to use the same components here. So through the constructor, I'm going to inject the connection multiplexer. I'm going to eject our serializer. And what is going to happen within our subscribe async is the following. So we are going to call our subscriber from the Redis package. And then there is this subscribe async. I'm going to subscribe to this uh, topic. And then I'm going to receive my data here. So I have two parameters there. And I don't care about the first one. I only care about my data. So my data is, in our case, any kind of a payload. And I want to handle this data. So this is the Redis value. And then since I can convert, I can serialize this uh, from the string to this object, I can do something like payload equals serializer and then deserialize. And I want to deserialize the data to this specific type of T, which is of course the reference type. And I want to provide here our data. And of course I can check if my, let's say payload is null, maybe there was some issue. Maybe I want to lock something. Maybe I want to, let's say, wrap this into my try catch block because maybe there was some, maybe there could be some error of deserialization. Maybe someone has broken the contract, right? Because now we'll be using a one data model here coming from our closed microservice and the other data model here being this data, data mo da uh, local data model and uh, defined within the aggregator microservice. So maybe someone changed the contract, changed the symbol from string to integer or, or so. We could, of course, uh, put some try catch here and just ensure that everything is fine and lock if there are, lock the issues if there are any. But for now, let's assume that everything will be, will be just fine, which is, of course, not the best assumption that you can do within your microservices solution. And finally, I'm just going to call our handler. So whatever the action is, I'm just going to call this handler and provide our payload, our instance of this deserialized object. All right, so we have the subscriber. We have the publisher. What is also interesting is that you can also provide this topic like this, new Redis channel. And then within the Redis itself, you could use, for example, these channels with some additional patterns. You could use the patterns, for example, to filter in or filter out some specific topics. Maybe you want to do some versioning. Maybe you want to only, you know, look for the uh, look for the specific keys being part of some bigger topic name. Maybe you want to have some complex topic namings with some additional patterns in place. You can use this Redis pattern mode here. Uh, but for now, we'll just assume it has to be one to one. It has to be the same. Uh, the topic name must be the exact match for, for the topic name used by the producer. So the producer and consumer side of the topic must use the same topic name one-to-one -one without any, any additional patterns uh, in between. So the last thing is that now we have this Redis streaming in place, what we can do uh, is something internally here. So we have this extensions for our Redis streaming and I can simply call something like um, iService collection and this method will be called at Redis streaming like this. And what is what we're going to do is simply just register our two singletons. So this will, just like our stream publisher um, and stream uh, subscriber, the default ones were registered here, we are going to, let's say, override these two guys but using our, but by using our Redis stream publisher and then Redis uh, stream subscriber. So that's it. And now finally, within our program CS for the both services, we can simply, and it's important, remember to call this after calling this at streaming. So somewhere here we can call, for example, at Redis streaming. So this invocation, this registration in IOC container will override, of course, the default ones here. So it's important that this uh, method will be called after this one, because otherwise, this would override the Redis uh, streaming components. So we can uh, call this method here and we can call this method also here. And of course, there we need to call add Redis as well, like this. Okay, it's, called, it's being called here, so that's fine. So yeah, looks good. So what we can do now is actually uh, try to run the services and see if they can receive the data, if they can send the data between each other. And just one quick fix, and uh, this should be, of course, registered as a hosted service, not as a singleton. So now that's fine. And now let's try to run our apps. So let me run the feed, feeder quotes service, and then let's run our aggregator service. And let's take a look what is going to happen. So it, they are both up and running. And if I call this um, quote rest, 
and then start pricing endpoint let's see there it is there's our quotes being generated internally within our quotes microservice our currency pairs and then there is our redis pubs going on and you can see data is being passed from this service to this service and we use Redis pops up as this decoupling mechanism. So that not that our services are not, not talking to each other directly. We have this decoupling between them being the Redis pops up. And of course, if I stop my um, generator now, as you can see, there is no more data being sent because it has, it has been stopped. But if I restart it once again, now the data is being sent once again. So very nice, uh, very nice stuff and very easy to use. And whenever you have some need of streaming the data, maybe before, you know, jumping in into the Kafka already and using this event streaming with some, uh, you know, additional <laughs> up and only um, data persistency layers between them. You just consider whether you need to store this data, whether you just need to simply pass through this data, whether you need something simple to just see, check, validate your ideas, how these things should work, talk to each other, stream data between each other, and maybe let's just simply give the Redis pub sub a try. All right, so that's that's it. That's all for this episode. Hopefully you have enjoyed connecting your uh, first services as much as I did. And as you have seen, you know, connecting um, your services in terms of data streaming between them using Redis pub sub is very, very simple. We have very major tool being Redis. We have very major libraries, like for example, this uh, stack exchange.redis library built by the developers who also uh, work around, uh, work with the stack overflow. So it's a very reliable, uh, very feature rich um, library that we can use to actually uh, plug in Redis into our uh, .NET and .NET Core applications. And we just connected them. We connected this uh, producer being our uh, codes a microservice with the consumer side being our greater microservice and we simply stream the data between these two. So that's it for, the, for this episode. Thanks for watching and uh, see you in the next one.